right now, I'm plummeting through the air at 20 miles an hour. OK. Actually, right now, I'm in my bedroom, experiencing the same nightmare that's been plaguing me for years. I've tried everything. Soothing lights, meditation, warm milk. I've even tried listening to my dad's now. That's what I call calm cassette. Both sides. Nothing seems to work. If only I could find a way to control what goes on inside my head when I'm asleep. I might be able to have sweet dreams for once. But until then, here we go again! Oh, that was a horrendous way to start the day. Although, my dad mentioned something last night that might help with my nightmares. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I made a note of it in my diary. Ooh, it looks like I've just received an email. Ah, here's my diary. Damn, I must have locked it before I went to bed last night. Now, where did I hide that key? Why not? I'll just add it to the rest. Looks like I've got an email. It wants my passcode. I'm sure it's in my brain somewhere, but I'm buggered if I can remember it. I'll make a note of that when I manage to unlock my diary. This should be a riot. Okay. It's a drawer with a little keyhole. I left the key next to my fly trap last night, but it's gone now. Here's a joke for you. Why don't carnivorous plants like wearing trousers? Because their flies keep getting stuck. He loves these. Maybe I should read him another one. He's surprisingly bad at trapping flies, but swallows all sorts of other crap. Here's a joke for you. Why did the pitcher plant enjoy being on an all-fly diet? It was so easy to stick to. Ooh, a key just fell out of him. OK. Bugger, it doesn't fit. Good idea. He's always hungry. Here you go, Clive. Dindins. OK. Let's see what he's guarding. Ooh, a little golden key. How exciting. The key fits. Now at least I can read what's inside. Oh, yeah. My dad was reading some book about positivity. That's a good place to start. He's probably left it downstairs somewhere. I'll make notes in the diary as I go along so I don't forget to do anything important. A roll of duct tape in here. I have to be careful around the house. If it's old, expensive and breakable, my parents probably have one. In for a penny. Let's see what we've got in here. You never know when you might need a tasty headache cure. Good idea. These are great for patching up stuff. How much of this stuff is there? That's a better be the last piece. I'm stuffed. 
That one was suspiciously close to Lloyd's door. I wonder what he's doing in there. It couldn't hurt to take a little look inside his room. It looks like my twin brother Lloyd is torturing another helpless animal. <laughs> yep. Brave little guy's obviously made a dash for freedom. I wonder if Lloyd knows what happened to him. Why is there stuffing everywhere? It was clogging up my scalpel. What's that in the vice? <laughs> What are you doing? Improvising. What exactly are you improvising? Groin surgery. What happened to your gerbil? He's done a runner. The little git you through the bars and escaped last night. That's why I've had to improvise. I've had enough of talking to you. You and me both. No! Mr Fumble! What's Mr. Fumble doing in your vice? He's going to be so popular with all the lady bears after his operation. He's going to be a magnificent tripod. Give my bear back. Not unless you have something I can add more legs to. If I return your gerbil, can I have Mr. Fumble back? Sure. I prefer a moving target. You and me both. I'd love to. Psych Out Volume 3, Regaining Control. This must be the book my dad was reading. This is interesting. It says you can create a positive dream box. One, find a suitable box. Two, decorate with peaceful runes. Three, add a dream companion. I reckon Mr Fumble would be perfect. Four, add inspiration to distract from any negative thoughts. Books and other literature work best. Then apparently I just place it next to my bed. This is definitely worth a try. There's a footnote. You can combat fear with laughter. How insightful. Gun magazine. Fire first, think later. Moisturising camouflage lip balm. Free with this issue. Ooh, there's a free camouflage lip balm on the front. Smell like peaches. It sounds like there's something trapped up there. Okay, here goes. Hey, it ran into that hole. Lloyd's gerbil sitting right on top of the clock now. should stop anything getting in or out. It's made of hickory and says 11 o'clock. It's also broken and only ever chimes at 1 o'clock. Lloyd's gerbil sitting on top of it. Now it says 1 o'clock. Now he's in my mum's welly. I'm sick of carrying this duct tape around too. Finally, got the little bugger. I'll get rid of this bog brush now, it's minging. Got them. Got it. It's got a badge on it from an Easter egg hunt, but I'm hoping to collect a few more badges. Okay. Okay. There's a lovely plump lint bunny in here. 
this looks like a good size for my dream box. Yeah, this seems like a really good idea. I think that's probably enough. Hey, that actually worked. They're all dry. It's stuck in its mouth. Come here, you little got it. This was Lloyd's first victim. It had to be sewn back together again. His teeth are like flipping razors. I suppose his sharp teeth might come in handy for something. It's from my parents. We're out at the regional otter flinging championships. D -d don't let Lloyd start throwing stuff out of his window again. And please, d -d don't go in the kitchen. Your mother accidentally took out the stopcock with her crossbow. And there's water all over the floor. D -d Dad. It's hanging on for dear life. Melee's Melee's, European Badger. Scraped off M54. The bit of thread just snapped off. I'm not going out there in my pyjamas. Some privacy, please. I hate to do this, but I need to get my bear back. How <laughs> back for more, are you? Well, I won't be needing this piece of crap anymore. Come to Mummy. Stuffing. I don't see any more lying around. I guess I'll have to find something else to stuff him with. That's a nice plump bear. Now, I just need to get him sewn up. There, now it's a straight fish hook. This'll be handy. There we go stitched up. There we go, some nice relaxing runes. I'll put it next to my bed when I'm ready. Hmm, maybe next to the bed would be a better place for it. Great stuff, now it's ready to put things into. In you go Mr Fumble. This counts as inspiration. I'll just stick my pyjamas on. Some privacy, please. Okay, I'm all ready. Let's do this. Well, this is different. It's not exactly what I'd call a sweet dream, but I suppose it's a step in the right direction. I wonder if there's anything here that can help me with my nightmare. I seriously doubt it. Uh, hi. If you say so. You're real. Apparently. You don't say much, do you? Look, I've literally got a splitting stomachache, and I almost ended up having experimental surgery on my bear hood. 
So forgive me if I don't feel like entering into a protracted chit-chat session with you. Someone who spent most of their life squatching me, drooling on my fur, chewing my eyes. Oh, good point. I'm sorry for everything. It's okay. It's just not the best day to find yourself anthropomorphically personified. I'll leave you alone now. Thanks. I appreciate that. Hmm. I'm not heavy enough to pull this down by myself. enough to pull the rope. Could you give it a go? Sure. A head trauma would go great with this cash in my stomach. Okay. Hang in there for a moment. I'm hanging. someone else takes it. Thanks for the chat. Anytime. Okay, here goes. Man, that tasted horrible. would be a better place for it. Did you hear Snoop Dogg's latest song about interplanetary travel? It was a Venus flight wrap. That one's his favourite. Why are carnivorous plants so good at keeping secrets? They keep their traps shut. Look at those tendrils go. What's a flytrap's favourite game? Snap! I'd better stop soon. He might uproot himself. Why do carnivorous plants love old adventure games? They're full of bugs. Oh no, that was the last one. Well, I suppose this counts as inspiration. Why 
Why don't carnivorous plants like wearing trousers? Because their flies keep getting stuck. Get it? <laughs> Buff crowd. Did you hear Snoop Dogg's latest song about interplanetary travel? It was a Venus flight wrap. Anyone? <laughs> Game. Snap! <laughs> oh, come on, this is comedy gold! Why do carnivorous plants love old adventure games? They're full of bugs! <laughs> that went a bit better. Why are carnivorous plants so good at keeping secrets? Their trap shut. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here all week. Why did the picture plant enjoy being on an all fly diet? It was so easy to stick to. <laughs> I'm on fire. Thank you and good night. Well, that's all the jokes I know. You know what? I'm happy with that. And those scores look kind of familiar too. I wonder what the prize will be. Hello. Hey, little lady. I scored over 20 points. What's my prize? Great job. Let me see what I can find back here. Mm, that's not a lot. You will just have to take my pet, Herman. Who what? Take care of him, and he'll take care of you. Remember, items you're carrying while you're asleep stay in your inventory, even if you switch dreams. Good tip, thanks. Anytime. What did the barman say? Items I was carrying in one dream will appear in another. I wonder if that will help me with my nightmare. Let's remove this natty dream box and see what happens when I go back to sleep. Here we go again. Fly, Herman, fly! All that progress, but frankly, it's not a whole lot more relaxing than plummeting. I wonder if my dad's book has any more pearls of wisdom. Chapter 2 Breaking Bread Sharing food with friends and enemies alike can help to bring you inner peace while you sleep. Both figuratively and literally, food can inspire companionship and reconciliation. OK, so a joke book's not going to cut it with Mr. Rawson back there. Looks like I've got an email. It wants my passcode. That's it. Right, let's read that email. Hmm, do I remember what? It's from someone calling themselves H. Looks like there's a photo attached. It's an article from the local paper ten years ago. Disley Ferret Murdered. The director of Figgington's controversial new theme park, Disneyland, 
was found murdered the day before the grand opening. He was discovered dressed up as the park's mascot, the Disley Ferret. However, police are still searching for the missing head of the costume, as they believe it may help lead them to the head of the director, which was also missing. The rest of the article's been torn off. Wait a minute. Something's coming back to me. There's something familiar about this whole story. My past, my memories, my nightmares. I feel like they're all connected to this event. My dad's book's helping me to control my dreams. But if I can find out exactly what went on ten years ago, maybe I'll be able to rid myself of these nightmares altogether. I reckon the local library will have a full copy of the article in its archives. My bike's parked just outside the house. like the postman's been. This must have arrived while I was asleep. Stuff you. It's from my mum's taxidermist. Contents. Formaldehyde. Fun-sized bottle. Flesh-eating beetles. Family bumper pack. One plastinated pufferfish. It's taped shut. Let's put those razor-sharp gnashes to good use, shall we? One dead pufferfish. Ow, that's a prickly fish. One small bottle of formaldehyde. And a bumper pack of flesh-eating beetles. This stuff's bound to come in handy for something. This mat is really abrasive. Honestly, it's like wiping your feet on sandpaper. I'm sure I get shorter every time I use it. There we go. Smooth as action man's pants. Now if I squeeze the air out of him, he just refills through his bottom. I'm not going out there in my pyjamas. It's got a puncture. Looks like I'm not going anywhere until it's fixed. should patch that hole in the tyre. Great, it's still flat though. Here, wrap your little fishy chops around this. Good as new. Let's head to the library. Ooh, a map just appeared in the top corner of the screen. That looks very useful. All fixed up and ready to ride. No one seems to be using it, so I guess it's mine now. Whoa, it's really hot in here. Blame Satan. I beg your pardon. Shh. Sorry. Hello, Miss Hambleton. Shh. What's behind that curtain? More astounding works of Satan, dearie. Astounding works of Satan? In a library? That's true. Satan pretty much controls all the libraries in the area now. Did Satan make it so hot in here? Well, undoubtedly. Satan's instruments put out a lot of heat. How goes the library today, Miss Hamilton? Oh, I'm incredibly busy. It's been non-stop in here all day. Busy? There's no one here. Books don't stamp themselves. Unless you have one of those fancy automatic book stamping machines. They're made by Satan. Satan makes automatic book stamping machines? Absolutely. Satan are the leading supplier of library equipment in the county. Here's a copy of their latest catalogue. 
They're committed to making librarians' lives easier through a process of innovation, technology, and redundancy. Let me show you our latest bit of Satan tech. Prepare yourself. This is going to revolutionize our tiny library. This is the Bibliotech 9000. It can find any book your soul is yearning for. Let me show you how. I scan my library card here. Now I think of the book I want to borrow. The bibliotheque searches my soul. Uh, I mean, it scans the electrical impulses in my brain. It locates the book's details. And dispenses it right over there. And here it is. Oh, my dear sweet Edmund. <laughs> anyway, if I want to return the book, I just put it on this shit here. <coughs> Goodbye, my love. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some books that I surely need stamping. <laughs> Satan. Self-aware textbook arrangement networks. Making idle hands work for you. The library card just fell out. Okay, let's see if this works. All good. by Edmund Plum. There's a message written inside. I board the train of regret at a time I will never forget. I hope you remember likewise when you see the world through my eyes. Graham's monkey will keep our little secret. E.P. What on earth does that mean? Maybe I should ask Miss Hampleton about it. Hambleton. Shh. Do you know a Graham who may or may not have had a monkey? <gasps> you must be referring to Saint Graham. He was the patron saint of Moon Logic. There are so many obscure happenings in the local area, they named the village church after him. Thanks, I'll check it out. I'll add the church to my map. Who are you talking to? No one. We'll be quiet then. Do you have any books about bread or baking? We have Paula Holyrood's latest book on pre-order, but it's not come in yet. I'm looking for an old newspaper article. Try the computer in the corner. All the archives are kept on there. What can you tell me about that book your soul is yearning for? Oh, my dear Edmund. He was a local poet and a fine, fine man. He'd write the most beautiful poems just for me. Then one morning, he boarded a train and never came back. He sent the library that book and his membership card before he died. Bye. Shh. I wonder if this card will work in here. Shh. Sorry. Hello, Miss Hambleton. Shh. Why does your newspaper archive have facial recognition? Personal biometrics and data are the only currency Satan is interested in. It's a bit old school now, though. 
Our new book retrieval system in the back room doesn't even have a face scanner. Once you've put the library card in, it scrapes any desires, guilty secrets, and other data it needs directly from your soul and sends them directly to head office for profiling. That's both ingenious and terrifying in equal measure. They got the idea from that social media company. Meta? Yes, it is a bit. Let's talk about something else. Bye. Shh. Gathering evidence. Evidence of what? I'm going to catch the thieving blighters in the act. Thieves? That's right. You name it, they've nicked it. Hearts? Are you trying to be funny? The thieves I'm after are tits. Tits? They lie in wait in this tree. Then swoop down on unsuspecting parishioners and plunder anything they can lay their thieving little beaks on. Jewelry, keys, money. It's why I've anything metal and shiny if it's not strapped down. Then they leave it all up on the church roof. The tits are leaving stuff on the church roof? Yep. There's probably a ton of ill-gotten gains up there. Please, may I borrow your camera? No way. It's the only way I'll catch them in the act. I've been petitioning the parish council to have the tits exterminated, but they won't unless they have hard evidence. I'll catch the little blighters. That's an unusual hat. A pride and joy. It's made out of tits. Your hat is made out of tits? One of this country's most prolific birds. I can't stand them, but the fellas do make good headwear. I think you'd get on well with my mother. You really love that hat, don't you? Almost as much as I hate tits. They stole the last one because I was foolhardy enough to put a shiny hat pin in it. I had to drop what I was doing and chase them, but they took it up on the roof. I never got it back. I'm not making that mistake again. Bye. Goodbye. Spiky, I wonder what species it is. It's under the tree. There's a village fate today, apparently. The windows of our church depict the legend of St Graham, as told by the 16th century poet Ernest Danglebury. Nothing says help the needy like a literal gold platter. Hello there. What? Can you hear me? Stop mumbling. I said, can you hear me? There's no need to shout. I should have seen that one coming. Hang on. I'll turn my hearing aid up. What are you doing here? I come to listen to the bells. They're so quiet, I can only hear them if I sit right here at the front. I'm sure they used to be louder. Where's the vicar? He's down at the village fate. Probably in the WI tent waiting for Paula Holyrood. Who's Paula Holyrood? She's some kind of bacon celebrity. She goes on TV and tells other people how rubbish their macarons are. Why is the vicar interested in Paula Holyrood? Something to do with the WI's jam competition. Plus, she has other assets. Do you want me to ring the bells for you? Oh, that would be lovely. But only if you know the correct order. I don't like change. Also, don't overuse the large one. It's only quiet, but it makes the old church shake. Last time somebody rang it, a car coil fell off the roof and almost hit the vicar. Do you know what order to ring the bells in? Sorry, no. All I 
I know is, they tell the story of St. Graham and his unnecessary demise in the Sierra Mountains. Do you know anything about a monkey? Don't be absurd. Unless, of course, you mean the monkey puzzle tree outside. That sounds like just the kind of vague and ambiguous hint I was after. Thanks. What? Thanks. You're welcome. Have you heard about the tits? Did Brian put you up to this? He's bloody obsessed with them. Though, if he's right, there's probably tons of valuable stuff up on the church roof. Shame there's no way to get it down. The roof's completely inaccessible. There's valuable stuff up on the church roof? That's my guess. But like I said, the roof's completely inaccessible. Presumably designed by the same plank who made the church bells three sizes too big. Do you know anything about bread or baking? What? Because I'm an old woman, I obviously know how to bake. Well, do you know how to bake? Of course I do. But I'm an appalling teacher. You're better off finding a good recipe book instead. Bye! Ta-ta! It shows a blue moon shining on a load of red poppies in a yellow desert. It shows two white snowy mountains being lit by yellow sun rays. It shows a blue dragon breathing red fire on a load of brown earth. St. Graham's Big Bell, please only ring at end of sequence. Overuse may cause damage to church roof. heard something fall off the roof. Don't mind if I do. Possessive little blighters. See a pin, pick it up, and all day long you'll have a pin. So this is the monkey mentioned in the book. Someone's carved their initials onto it. J.H. loves E.P. OK, let's see what secrets you're keeping. I hope the trousers don't fall down. An old biscuit tin with a photograph inside. It's a black and white photograph of a young couple. They both look a bit familiar, but their eyes have been cut out. Creepy. photo. The perfect crime, as long as no one looks at the name, or the date of birth, or the badly adhered and ill-fitting photograph. I wonder if it'll be enough to fool Satan. I'll put it inside the book to keep it safe. If I line up the library stamp, the numbers in their eyes read 10.15. Maybe that's the time his train was due to leave. It was obviously important to him. Points for effort, though. 
I guess their love affair was a secret at the time. Right, let's give it a go. son of Archibald and Lucille, the late Lord and Lady of Fig Hall, intends to channel his inner mustelid in an attempt to promote his latest venture, Disneyland, a new theme park to be built on the Fig Estate. The park has sparked controversy amongst local residents and invited anger from other members of the Fig family, not least from Fergus's brother Horatio, who's been nothing if not vocal about his objections. When interviewed, Horatio Fig described the plans as a load of bloody bollocks. Here's the rest of the article that was sent to me. Disley Ferret Murdered. The director of Figgington's controversial new theme park, Disneyland, was found murdered the day before the grand opening. He was discovered dressed up as the park's mascot, the Disley Ferret. However, police are still searching for the missing head of the costume, as they believe it may help lead them to the head of the director, which was also missing. As most readers will be aware, the park's director was none other than Fergus Fig, and police suspect foul play within the ranks of the Fig family itself. Fergus's brother Horatio now the prime suspect for his murder. Police are asking locals for any information leading to Horatio's whereabouts. After he disappeared following a brief police interview on the night of the incident. No way! Murdered by his own brother. Actually, I can relate to that. I'm still not sure why this article was sent to me though. I should probably check out the old Fig Mansion and see what I can find out. I'll add Fig Hall to my map. New evidence in murder case. The mystery of the Disley Ferret murder continues, but new evidence has now come to light and things are not looking good for Horatio Fig. Already the prime suspect, Horatio's prolonged disappearance only compounds his guilt. But as if that wasn't enough, new DNA evidence places Horatio at the crime scene, and a subsequent search of Fig Hall has uncovered an antique duelling sword with Horatio's prints on the handle and Fergus's blood on the blade. Add in Horatio's famous temper, fondness for drink and overall instability, and you don't have to be Nancy Drew to put the pieces together. There's now a substantial reward for any information leading to Horatio's capture. Figgington Parish Council have also agreed to erect a memorial statue to Fergus in the town centre, in recognition of the fact that he tried to put Figgington on the map for something other than witch burning. I better check out this statue and see what all the fuss is about. I'll add the town centre to my map. What would you like to do now? Goodbye, Edmund. I'll put it all in the bin where it belongs. If this was a Sierra adventure, I'd at least have got some bloody points for that. Um, excuse me? Oh, what do you want? Do you know where I can find a statue of Fergus Fig? The only statue I know about is at the other end of this street. You mean the street you're blocking? Do you see any other streets around here? 
please could I get past? I am trying to feed an hungry child. Get some perspective. I'm sure there's room if you just move a bit to your left. There's a perfectly good road right there. I'd rather not. The council seem to have installed a rather large crack in it. Then I guess you're stuck, aren't you? You're dropping blueberries all over the pavement. Oh, no. Call the police. What are you feeding her? She only eats blueberry muffins. Delicious. I've heard blueberries are a superfood. Yeah, well, they're super annoying to pick out. She only likes the cakey bits. Couldn't you just buy a plain muffin and save yourself the hassle? You don't have a lot of experience negotiating with toddlers, do you? Is it still a blueberry muffin if the blueberries are all over the pavement? I didn't say she likes blueberries. Just blueberry muffins. Right, of course, but if you could just see your way to... I ain't moving until she's finished her muffin. How long does that normally last? Her previous record is 80 minutes. Is there any way to speed things up at all? You could be a good citizen and get her a drink. What does she like? She's two. What do you think? Do I look like a bleeding cow to you? Uh, she drinks a fruity shooties like any self-respecting toddler. Right. Bubblegum flavour is her favourite. Naturally. Bye. <laughs> Whatever. Day, Mr. Shopkeeper, sir? No, it really isn't. What's so bad about today? Well, let's see now. First, I arrive at work and discover some little git has graffitied my shop. Next, I discover a whole crate of expired products in the back which should have been sold months ago. I then have to spend the entire morning explaining how to use a pricing gun to Clint flipping eastward over there. And now an annoying squirt in dungarees is asking me pointless questions and threatening to knock over all my stock with her inexplicably massive pigtails. What can you tell me about the Fig Brothers? Isn't that a video game? I can see this isn't going to be one of those quest-furthering conversations. Maybe you're just not asking the right questions. OK, then. Have you got any hints? Yeah, try not to knock anything over with that ridiculous hair. Thanks. You're a great help. I'd like a bubblegum fruity shooty, please. You have expensive taste. They're in the fridge. Bye. Come again. Odd-o. Makes no odds to me. Hi there. Yo. My mum ate too many jelly babies while pregnant, and now I'm super flexible. I'm not sure that's how human development works. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know about that. No, I guess you wouldn't. What are you doing? These bottles have expired, so I'm reducing them. What's in the bottles? Orange-flavoured fruity shooties. These ones are really old, but they've not updated the packaging in years. Same old bottles. How much are you reducing the drinks by? The boss said to make them 50% off, but I think that's way too cheap. So I've set them to 100% off instead. What great initiative. I'm sure your boss will be delighted. You'd think so. But he says I don't really have a head for business. You don't say. You're a dab hand with that pricing gun. I know, right? I don't even need to look while I do it. Bam, price it up. Bam, reload. Bam, price it up again. Bam, reload. Bam, price it up again. Bam. Yeah, I get the picture. All without even looking. Let's hope you never get your hands on a real firearm. Bam! God help us all. Bye!
Catch you later. I'll just take one. Whoa, these things are expensive. I wonder if you'll notice. Don't mind if I do. This one's a hundred percent off. Can I take it? Oh, Gordon Bennett, not again. Fine, take it. Thanks. I found this. What oh, capture? Now, out my way. Are you welcome? And I'm sure someone else will pick up your mess. I don't even know who I'm talking to. She's long gone. Well, if no one else wants them. Fergus Fig. This monument was erected to commemorate the founder of Figgington's first and only tourist attraction, Disneyland. This vending machine was relocated from the theme park before the site was redeveloped into one of Figgington's enviable housing estates. The statue depicts Fergus Fig at the moment of his dignified demise, headless and dressed as a ferret. This machine must be ten years old now. According to the plaque, it's from the old theme park. There are a load of duck toys still inside and the coin slot is a funny shape. Vent for yourself. This machine is calibrated to accept 10 gram nickel theme park tokens only. Well, that's just brilliant. I bet they're all long gone and buried with the theme park itself. Weasel attacks. It's an old promotional map showing the location of the theme park. Looks like when it was demolished, our house was built on top of it. Unsurprisingly, that's where the weasels are having a bad time at the hands of my mother. Nice cap. Thanks. It's made of genuine fake weasel fur. Do you really love weasels? No, but volunteering looks good on my CV. What's the map on the wall? We use it to plot weasel-related incidents in the local area. What kind of weasel incidents? It used to just be the odd bit of roadkill or accidental stampings, but recently we've been seeing a more creative approach. Everything from garrote wire to landmines. You wouldn't know anything about it, would you? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. That was a suspiciously evasive response. Anything new? No, none of it's new. Although we have got a nice bucket of odds and sods by the counter. Bye. See ya. For the weasels. Thank you. Please help yourself to a piece of useless crap. I mean, pre-loved item from the bucket. Free random object? Yes, please. different metals and depths. Oh, it's an old token from the theme park. That answers that question. It'd be a 
try not to. It's the Fig family's official purple and green colours. Nice desk. Thank you. It has everything I need to manage all our members' needs. Can I take a look around? Sure. Do you have a membership card? My brother defiled my membership card. That's rotten luck. If you tell me your membership number, I can print off a temporary visitor pass for you. I can't remember my membership number. Sorry. You'll just have to try and remember it. I find that if I just lie back and work through things in my head, the answer reveals itself eventually. If it helps, they all begin with H.T. Can you tell me anything about the Fig Brothers? Esme is the expert on that sort of thing. Bye. Goodbye. Her name tag says Esme. I'm watching you. Hello, Esme. Welcome to Fig Hall. Oh, it's nice to see young folk taking an interest in local history. What can you tell me about the Fig Brothers? Uh, if you have not got a visitor pass, I'm afraid I'm not authorised to tell you anything. What are you doing? Watching. What exactly are you watching? The rooms, my dear. I'm an official room watcher. Do the rooms do anything worth watching? Not on my watch, they don't. No ice creams dropped on the floor. No lost pensioners. No missed opportunities to show off the secret pre-stole. And no antique vases going walkabouts. Not while Esme Duckworth's on the case. Take that, Marjorie. Who's Marjorie? <laughs> you mean who was Marjorie? She turned her back on her room to eat a curly whirly. And when she looked back, one of the fig family's antique vases had been stolen. She was out of here quicker than you can say. Marjorie, you're fired for eating a curly whirly and taking your eyes off the room while someone stole the antique vase. Wow, you really take this room watching seriously. The Heritage Trust is a very serious organisation. They spent a lot of money getting hold of this place. Although they never managed to get control over the old estate. Oh, one of the Fig Twins refused to sell it. The Fig Twins? Oh, yes. Didn't you know? Oh, I've said too much. Get a visitor pass and I'll tell you all I know. Where can I get a pass? A visitor pass? Are you a member of the Heritage Trust? I am, but Lloyd used my membership card to scrape his hamster off our driveway. And I've already created one fake ID today. That's okay, dear. Just pop over to the desk and tell them your membership number. They'll print you off a temporary visitor's pass. I can't remember my membership number. Don't worry. It's in that little head of yours somewhere. I'm sure it will come back to you. Bye. Come again soon. By the way, I heard the village fate is opening on the church grounds about now. They have a pussy wallop stall. That's always worth a visit. Thanks. Looks like they've managed to install localised rain for this year's event. That's considerate. Hello there. Hey up. Fancy a wallop. How much is it for a wallop? One shiny brass pound for three wallops. I don't have any money. Well, I suppose you need to find some if you want to wallop a goose anytime soon. Bye. Come back if you fancy a wallop. startled me. I've had a terrible headache recently. I think 
It's probably due to the church bells. There's a gang of tits stealing your congregation's stuff. Sadly, I know. Unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do. But if you ring the large bell, their ill-gotten gains will fall off the roof. Thanks. I really could have done with that advice earlier. Can you tell me anything about the Fig Brothers? The Figs? Well, one of the Fig Twins was a lovely, quiet fellow. Wait, they were twins too? Oh yes, I christened them both on the same day. Horatio, on the other hand, was a bit unstable. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. But I'm not here to talk about work. I have jam to inspect. You're inspecting jam? That's right. I'm judging these preserves to find a winner. There are prizes for jam. Oh, yes. Only an audience with TV baking legend Paula Holyrood and a signed copy of her new book, Bread is Breast. <laughs> I mean best. Are you okay? Oh, yes. I'm a huge fan of her. Bread? That do. That book sounds like just the kind of inspiration I need. What do you have to do to win the jam competition? Anyone can enter. You just need to bring a jar with sweet flavour, vibrant colour, and perfectly preserved fruit. Bye. B -b -b Bye. Take a seat when you're ready and start bidding. Minimum bid is a pound, though. Bye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Grayberries. I need to give them some of the colour back first. Let's get some blue back into these berries. Lovely. All plump, blue and pine scented. In you go. This should pet those berries up a bit. Should make it taste a bit sweeter. Okay, I'm happy with my effort. I wonder if it would stand the chance in the Village Fates jam competition. Do you mind if I enter my special jam into the competition? Of course. The more the merrier. Thank you. My name's Lucy uh, Lloyd. Nice to meet you, Lucy Lloyd. My heavens, how utterly divine. The bluest blueberries, a hint of fresh pine, and my headache is gone. First prize goes to Lucy Lloyd. Well done. Is okay. It's not sentient. Hello. Ah, another fan. Yeah, I never miss an episode of 
great British cake off. Of course you don't, darling. Did you see what happened to the vicar? He was covered in purple gunge and locking himself in the portal when I arrived. Did I miss something? Actually, it's probably best that you don't know. So, who are you exactly? Don't pretend you don't know. I am the Queen of Babs, the Baroness of Brioche, the Dame of Damp Noodle. I make bread on the television home. Can I have a copy of your book? Oh, no, sweetie. This copy is reserved for the winner of the jam competition. I won the jam competition. You'll have to prove it if you want a copy of my book. Signed copies are very desirable. Well, aren't you a clever girl? Does your mother bake? Does pouring napalm down rabbit holes count? I'm sorry. Nothing. I'm uh, self-taught. Well, it sounds like your jam absolutely killed them out there today, honey. Here's your prize. I hope it inspires you to keep on baking. That's probably not a brilliant idea, but thank you. be a better place for it. There we go. I'll just dip my pyjamas on. It looks like that baking book has delivered on inspiration. But is there anything here that can help me with that monster in my nightmare? What do you want? What is this place? Welcome, traveller. You have found yourself on the steps of the illustrious city of Bapchester. There aren't any steps. You're instantly unlikable. You know that. Why is it so windy here? Beats me. The weather is out of our control. I'd like to come in. Oh, they all do. Then they all try to steal the secret recipe from my famous love bombs. The Grand High Batmaster put me in charge of this mighty gate. It won't be easy to get past me. Let me guess. I have to answer a riddle. Smart ass. Let's see if you've been paying attention. Here's my riddle. Two brothers are arguing. One loses his head completely, and the other one runs away. What colour stripes were their matching ties? Green and purple. Bugger. I suppose I have to let you in now. Obligation, not inclination. What's a love bun? It's a bun. Right. But instead of filling you up with carbohydrates, it fills you up with love and compassion. Does it work on massive, terrifying monsters? Wow, you have weird taste. Unsurprisingly enough, I've never tried. That's probably a question for the Grand High Bop Master. Where can I find the Grand High Batmaster? Just keep walking away from me. Will that help me find her? I doubt it, but it would certainly make my day more enjoyable. What's your name? My friends call me Brock. Can I call you Brock? I'll give you two guesses. Yes. One guess left. Hi, Brock. Don't do that. 
you don't look very well. That's because I have an intolerance. To all the gluten? To idiots. Can you open the door for me? Nope. Against my better judgment, you're free to come and go as you please. So you can open the bloody thing yourself. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you. For chatting. For weaving. Do you know anything about the Manchester love buns? Yes, yeah, stay away from them. Really? Why? I almost lost everything I had because of those bloody things. How? They bring out my worst side. They make you aggressive? Worse, they make me generous. I ate a whole packet of them one morning and spent the rest of the day giving away all my bloody stock. Never again. I'd like some stickers, please. Oh, I bet you would. Only you don't look particularly... solvent. How do you intend to pay? Uh. Thought so. As luck would have it, I have some free beginner packs to get people hooked. <clears throat> I mean, started. Here you go. Take some of these model paints, too. That's very kind of you. Oh, yeah, I'm all hot. Nice sticker albums. Thanks. Are you a fan of the adventures of Henan? Should I be? You're about the only one who isn't. Everyone's collecting my stickers now. Everyone? Well, nearly everyone. I even export them beyond Bapchester. Where do you export your stickers to? Far and wide. Anywhere the import duties allow. Exporting was a lot simpler before Trexit. Trexit? All the trolls of Bapchester decided they would rather go it alone. That's why we built a wall and guard our gate 24-7. Was it worth it? It's a small price to pay. Apart from all the higher prices we have to pay. Nice figures. Thanks. Each one is handcrafted from a solid block of sugar. They're incredibly durable. Just keep them out of the way of the rain, ants and fire. Fire? Yeah, sugar burns at a ridiculously high temperature. I learned that the hard way. I used to have a full head of hair. Nice stickers. Thanks. It's the reflective silver ones that everyone wants, but you usually have to trade your way up to those. Goodbye. Yep. Hello there. Huh? Enjoying your stickers? Hmm? Is that your sister? What? Shall I just leave you alone then? Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Yeah. She looks engrossed in her stickers. Nice hair. Don't you start. Why are you hanging around this poster? Hmm. Those are me four brothers. They're leaving me to go on their world tour. Why aren't you in the band? I used to be. A few years back, hair like mine was all the rage. Everyone wanted to see our floppy curtains bouncing about in the spotlights. But then everything changed. Soft, yielding hair was out, and stiff, rigid hair was the only thing the fans cared about. The taller, the better. It looks like your brothers all managed to change their hair. Should they do it with industrial hair gel? But I can't use it. It brings me out in a rash. I have international stardom, and all I have is a cold metal pole to lean on. And it's not even my pole. Is that metal pole comfortable? Not really, but I'm a born leaner, so it'll have to do. Is there any other way you could achieve the tall hair look? Tried everything I can think of. Maybe modern science will find a way, but until then I'm going nowhere. If I could help you achieve taller hair, what's in it for me? I know what you're getting at. 
You'd have to valuable stickers, right? Uh. Tell you what, I have a pretty rare one in me back pocket, and it's all yours if you can help me out with me floppy do. That's better than nothing, I suppose. Goodbye. See you later. What's wrong? <laughs> my kite's got a hole in it. That's a kite. It looks more like a slice of bread. It is a slice of bread. But when the wind is this strong, it can still fly pretty well when it doesn't have a hole in it. Can I help? If you can find a way to fix my kite, I'll show you how well it flies. Goodbye. Goodbye. I reckon this might fix it. Hey, that's caught the wind pretty well. Thank you. I can make it go even higher too. Just ask and I'll show you. It looks complicated. It's an invention of my own making. Static electricity is generated, making it spin around. A real time saver in the kitchen. I call it the self-electrifying danger bowl. So a lot of them, do you? Marketing is my strong suit. Hello. Greetings from the world of beyond. You mean this insane excuse for a dream? I mean science. You remind me of someone. I'm a figment of your imagination. What did you expect? Is the self-electrifying danger ball dangerous? Not really. It's just a name. All of the excess electrical charge is redirected up to that metal ball at the top. If you touch that, you get a bit of a shock. Which is why I try to keep it away from anything conductive. Although, to be honest, even if I do touch it, it just makes my hair and beard stick up in the air. I'd better go now. Don't stop believing. Poor. Smells of freshly baked bread in here. I'll take one. Let's give this bun a makeover. What a work of art. It smells lovely in here. It does, doesn't it? It's my most powerful marketing tool. If I need to increase sales, I just crack open the window and let the smell out. Customers can smell it for miles around. Why don't you just leave the window open all the time? Were you born in a barn? It's too bloody windy out there. Do you make the love buns? That is the responsibility of the Grand High Buckmaster. That's me. The recipe is a closely guarded secret passed down from Batmaster to Batmaster. Nice oven. It's precisely calibrated to the correct temperature. Even the slightest change to the settings or fuel makes a huge difference. So don't muck about with it. Can I have a bun? There are some free love bun samples in the corner. But the effects don't last long. How long? Well, it depends who's eating it. Maybe uh, 15 seconds at the most. What's the secret recipe? Really? You think it's going to be that simple? Are the love buns powerful enough to work on terrifying nightmare monsters? That's quite specific. But I don't see why not. If the bun was large enough, the ones I sell are only big enough for the local trolls. Couldn't you make a larger one for me? I could, but I'm not going to. It would use up all of my love bun starter. What the hell was that? I didn't hear anything. What's a love bun starter? It's a living sourdough mix that I use as the base for all of my love buns. Then I add a few simple ingredients to it, which makes them work perfectly on trolls. Do they only work on trolls? My recipe only works on trolls, but it could be adjusted to work on just about anything. OK, come on, you must have heard it that time. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Could you open the window? Only when I'm ready to lure in more customers. Or if it gets too hot in here. Remind me again what the secret ingredients were. Ha! Nice try. There, a secret. The recipe and starter are both secure in the chamber behind me. OK, enough now. What's behind the door? Oh, that's just my sourdough starter. It probably needs feeding. This place is nuts. Anyway, the door behind me is so thick, it would take a frenzied beast to get through it. You mean like a... bear? Don't bring me into this. Ha! I don't see Bungalay getting through a lace curtain without bruising himself. No offence intended. Clearly! No, it would take more than that to get through my door. What kind of frenzied beast do you reckon could get through your door? What? I don't know. Uh, the one that really loves bread, I suppose. Bye. Toodaloo. I got you this. It's not a love bun, is it? No. It looks nothing like a love bun, because it isn't one. Fine. Give it here, then. Oh, that feels nice. It makes me feel all generous and compassionate. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling unusually generous. Goodbye. Yep. I don't think I can afford them. No, you, you probably can't. And I certainly don't feel like giving away any freebies right now. a love bun because it isn't one. Fine. Give it here then. Oh, that feels nice. It makes me feel all generous and compassionate. I don't think I can afford them. Oh, don't say that. It makes me feel awful. Look, don't tell anyone, but you can have that one there for nothing if you like. Go on, off you go. Don't say Panini never did anything for you. Thanks. Here, you can have these paints back. I won't need them. Hey, what do you think of this place? I have literally no idea what's happening. One minute I'm hanging from a rope in a nightclub, and the next I'm surrounded by giant pastries. It's all getting a little much if I'm being brutally honest. Do you want to swap any stickers? No. I don't collect them after one got stuck to me and pulled half of my fur out. Oh yeah, I remember that. Do you think you could get through the Batmaster's giant door? No, I wasn't really built for manual labor. How do you think we can get through the Batmaster's door? Is there no one else who can help you? Frankly, I could use a bit of a break from all this. There must be some other poor schmo you can drag around with you instead of me. Bye. Oh, can I stop talking now? That would certainly warm the room up, but I'll need to open the oven door first. Hey, keep away from me, oven. Sorry, I didn't think you were watching. Well, I was, so leave it alone. I don't want it getting too hot in here. Could you distract her for me? <sighs> what do you want me to do? I don't know. Think of something devilishly clever. Fine. Hang on. Excuse me. Sure, what do you want to know? So, the, I was thinking... 
away from me, oven. You have an alarm on your oven? Damn right. And not just any alarm. The Bread Defender Elite. The built-in laser trigger is set off when the beam is broken. I installed it after I had a break-in. Stolen love buns flooded the black market and inadvertently caused the Great Troll Orgy of 93. That sounds like something best avoided. Wow, that did a lot. I wonder what will happen if I turn it back again. as inspiration. I'll take the other one out. Hi again. Hey, great set earlier. Thanks. Where's everybody gone? They all left after your set. I'm just cleaning up before I knock off myself. Isn't that the same glass you were polishing before? Yeah, I can't get it off. Do you need a hand? Nah, I'm sure it'll come off eventually. You just go about your quest. Do you collect he now stickers too? Of course, doesn't everyone? What stickers are you after? I only need one more to complete my set. Anna Barnes. Bye. See ya. I'd love to trade him for my evil breath sticker. Here you go. Mind if I take this? Go for it. The owner just left it here. Just don't expect it to keep you dry. How do you mean? It's designed specifically for bug dwelling organisms. The material's made out of sphagnum moss to collect rainwater, not dispel it. You mean it soaks up rain? Yep. You still want it? It may be useless, but it's free. I'm having it. That's the spirit. There we go. Sticker. 
that's a cabal. So, here, take my pride and joy. The silver skeletal tiddler. Take good care of him for me. Finally, I got a silver sticker. It's highly reflective. Could you distract her for me again? Excuse me. Hey, could I ask you something again? Sure, what do you want to know? So, uh, I was thinking. Yes, what about? Nothing would just burn. I was uh, wondering how you feel about Let's being distracted. Let's see if I can trick the laser with a I'll retractor try not sticker. To. If I'm not paying proper attention, Hopefully people stop might the alarm try going to on. take advantage. Nice chat. But I've got what baking to put do. In. Don't let me keep you. This should heat things up a bit. Oh, is it just me or has it got hotter in here? I think I'll have to open the window. There. That's a bit better. a better place for it. There we go. It's still raining. You never know when you might need a splinter. something to eat. Lunch time. Calmed it down. I can probably pick it up now. 
Okay. Okay. There we go. Perfect for baking. Ready, steady, bake. It's done. And it doesn't look too bad, all things considered. preferred the drooling monster to drowning. Against my better judgement, let's see what the psychology book says now. Chapter 3. Take a break. Reach out and grab every opportunity. Take inspiration from relaxing times in your past. Close your eyes and transport yourself back to a childhood holiday or activities with your family and loved ones. We did occasionally visit somewhere near the sea. Mainly so Mum could practice her harpooning. All I remember is hundreds of crabs on the beach. Nice chips, though. It's empty now. Not while I'm in my pyjamas. Membership number is HT70705. Let me just check that for you. Here we are. Lucy, is it? Yep, that's me. Well remembered. Okie dokie. Let's print you out a visitor pass. There you go. Enjoy Thick Hall. I can't wait. Okay. I've got a visitor pass. Oh, jolly good. What would you like to know? Am I permitted into the cafe now? Of course. Go right on through. What can you tell me about Horatio Fig? Horatio, you say? Fig always his home until he fled town and it was repossessed ten years ago. The Heritage Trust purchased it a few years later, but hardly anything had changed since the day he left. Uh, apart from the cafe and the car park uh, and, and the shop and the adventure playground. Did his brother Fergus live here too? No, not after their parents died. Horatio inherited the all and Fergus got the rest of the family's land. That was what caused all the problems. Horatio never agreed with his brother's theme park. Thought it was an abomination to build something like that on the family estate. So he killed him? Well, the evidence certainly pointed that way. And after being interviewed by the police, he emptied the family vault and fled town. 
Sounds like the actions of a guilty man to me. What can you tell me about Fergus Fig? No, oh, poor Fergus. He was a sweet boy, really. Young at heart. Nothing like his twin. I know what that's like. You know, I really think this whole theme park idea could have been good for this town. Such a shame. Do you know what happened on the night he was murdered? No one knows for sure. The police got an anonymous tip-off about the murder. Where can I find out more about the murder? Hmm. The chief of police at the time retired a few years ago. He spent years trying to track Horatio down. It was his obsession. And it took a toll on his marriage. He ended up moving to the other side of the world. Australia? Hull. I don't fancy a trip to Hull. I don't blame you. You could try talking to the arresting officer instead. A nice young American chap. He arrived in Figgington ten years ago with an head full of dreams. I know what that's like. He left the force last year to follow his lifelong ambition to be a dining critic. He might be able to point you in the right direction. Perfect. Where can I find him? Do you know the Ferris Head pub in the town centre? It should be opening for lunch about now, and he never misses a chance to critique their pie of the day. Thank you. I'll see if I can track him down. What happened to Horatio and Fergus's parents? Ah, uh, a tragic set of circumstances. According to my sources, their mother Lucille Fig died of consumption. Quite literally, in fact. She was eaten by one of the family's pet leopards. Sadly, their father, Archibald Fig, met his demise at his wife's funeral. At the wake, he unexpectedly choked on a piece of swan and couldn't be revived. The old family had a rather odd relationship with animals. That probably explains the theme park and ferret costumes. Oh, fruitcakes, the lot of them. Bye. Goodbye, dear. Hang on. I remember something else. That was... odd. It's no wonder I've been having nightmares with all this buried in my brain. I definitely need to get to the bottom of what happened ten years ago. Phew! Look at that queue! A 40-year-old photo of the fireplace next door. A 40-year-old photo of the fireplace next door. Horatio and Fergus settling a brotherly dispute with a duel, taken moments before Fergus was stabbed in the groin. It's a photo of Fergus Fig. I really don't want it, thanks. Just as well. It's not yours to take. Yeah, that too. That ain't gonna happen. But I have a library card to prove I'm old enough, look. According to that, you're 76 years old. And a man. And dead. So, you're either an underage girl with appalling forgery skills, or a septuagenarian zombie. Either way, you can jog on. Is that a no, then? Sharp as a tack, you are. Who's the guy with the... Dog? I oh, don't mind him. That's just Curly the caretaker. Don't worry, he can't hear us. He's completely deaf. He worked as a caretaker at that theme park for all of about half an hour. He's the one who discovered the owner's body on the opening night. Works at the local school now, though. Oh, yeah. I didn't recognise him without his plunger. The kids at the school tease him something chronic, but he's got thick skin. That's good. At least it doesn't bother him. No, I mean, literally, he has incredibly thick skin. Hands like falconer's gauntlets. Face like a leather knapsack. Poor 
guy. No idea where he got the dog, though. He feeds it on pork scratchings. Lucky for me, no one else has teeth strong enough to eat them. Who's the guy with the laptop? He used to work for the police, but now he writes reviews on the parish council's blog. I never read them, though. I don't need some incomer telling me how to think. With his out-of-town taste buds and his fancy foreign wordlage. Bye. Bye, then. By the way, don't miss our live music extravaganza later today. Ooh, what sort of music? Grungy grime. You're hosting a live grungy grime extravaganza? Sorry, no, I just noticed a bit of muck on the floor there. To be honest, I'm not really sure what the music will be like. But the chap has a big bushy beard, so it's bound to be good. That sound logic? Enjoying your lunch? I literally don't know how to describe it. Did you used to be a police officer? Back in a previous life. The name's Woody. I'm a dining critic now. I visit all the local eateries and review them for the parish council. Is that basically just this pub and the thick hall cafe? Wait, there's a cafe? Well, that's just doubled my workload. Why did you swap the police force for food? Back when I was younger, I trained hard to be accepted into the force. I learned combat, investigative skills, and was even captain of a small team. Yeah, but I never discovered the true secret of fitting in. Other officers were jealous of my achievements and wanted revenge. That's just the curse of success, I suppose. I had to escape, so I started a new career. That's the end of my tales from the police force. You never know. I may return to it one day, but I'm sure it's changed a lot since I left. Probably not as much as you'd think. Hmm, maybe. But I've found true happiness doesn't come from a shiny badge on your chest. It's found at the bottom of a bowl of delicious stew. The middle of a satisfying toasty. The topping on a hot crumble. Unfortunately, I'm yet to find any of those in this town. What can you tell me about the Fig Brothers case? Right now, not a lot. I've got a deadline for the Figgington Parish Council's blog. If I don't get my Pie of the Day review written up soon, it'll be obsolete. What was in the pie? It's not so much about the feeling. I review the whole experience. The trouble is, recently I've been getting a lot of flack for my reviews. Our readership want their reviews written for locals, by locals. I've lived here for over 10 years, but I still haven't quite got the hang of the provincial dialect. I need to find regional words to put into my reviews, to make them sound more authentically local. What local words do you need? Uh, let me see. I need good local words for insipid, leathery, caustic. Sounds like you've had a roller coaster of a lunch. In a lot of ways, eating a roller coaster would have been less traumatic. Could you help me source some local expressions for my review? Then I'll tell you what I can about the case. Okay, fine. I'm not sure what some of those words even mean. Sorry, I need to write the rest of my review now. Maybe try a dictionary? Bye. Bye. This day just keeps getting better. What do you want now? I need to find some local words. Well, there are plenty sprayed all over my shop walls. What are you doing? What does it look like? Defacing property. Not funny. I'm trying to get this bloody graffiti off the rods of my shop. At least it's only a short name. Oh, this is just the tip of the filthberg. Some little scrotes broke in through my storeroom window and scribbled all over my walls. It's going to take me hours to get it all off. Cool. Can I go in and take a look? Whatever, just don't nick anything. I left Dirty Harry in charge. What did they write on your walls? Go in and see for yourself. I don't even know what half of it means. What are you using to get the graffiti off? Bubblegum fruity shooty. Figures. I'll just leave you to it. <laughs> Your boss.
boss said I could go and have a look at the storeroom. Cool, if he said it was OK, I believe you. You're very trusting, aren't you? Oh, I think I'm clever enough to spot a dishonest customer when I see one. Can you help me with some local words? Words aren't really my thing. I'm a man of action. In charge at last, I see. I knew my time would come. Just don't go giving stuff away. That's what he said. Pfft, do I look like a complete idiot? Your boss also said I could have a free lolly too. Oh really? Is that right? Well, if the boss said so, why don't you just help yourself? Er... Uh... Sorry, did that come across as sarcastic? Seriously, just take one if you want it. How did your boss like your new pricing structure? He wasn't keen, bless him. I don't think he's great at numberology. Still got the pricing gun? Yeah, I don't want anyone messing with me. I suppose no one wants a price on their head. Bam! Bye! OK. Ah, genuine dead rat pelts. The shopkeeper sure knows how to cover up in style. There's even more graffiti behind it. They can strip a corpse of all its flesh and fur in record time. Poor little things must be starving. Wow, they made short work of that. Curly has a face like a crumplish swan anus. Judging by what the pub landlord said about Curly's face, I guess crumplish must mean thick and leathery. I love a good local adjective. I must remember to tell Woody about it. Tasteless, caustic, able to burn or corrode by chemical action. Ouch! Are you any good on local terminology? What's that, young Wimple Snuffer? That's a yes, then. What's a good local word meaning insipid? I'm not sure what that means. Have you got a dictionary? Actually, I do. It says it's something weak, tasteless and lacking flavour. I see. Weak with no taste, eh? Sounds just like the cafe's herbal tea selection to me. Why don't you ask the dinner lady next door? Uh, thanks. Never mind. I hear you offer a selection of herbal teas. We do, but no one ever orders them. They taste slightly less exciting than hot water. Proper nat cock, if you ask me. Come again. Nat cock. You know, weak, with bugger all flavour. Great word, thank you. Do you want any tea or not? Er, uh, no. Thanks, anyway. Do you know anything about the fig case? Unless you're talking about an actual case of actual figs. No. Bye. See you later.
careful in there. Just don't. The vicar really did a number on this toilet. There's weird purple goo everywhere and it won't go off. That scrubbing looks like hard work. It's awful. This purple stuff won't come off however hard I scrub. The problem is these cheap council issue cleaning products. I need something more caustic to get this off. What kind of cleaner do you need? Something. Anything. As long as it's caustic enough to get this shite off. Bye. Mind if I borrow this? What the hell for? I know someone who needs a good corrosive cleaner. Well, there's none better than this stuff. Take it. I've got loads more in the shop anyway. Thanks. I'm getting through a lot of these today. Here, try this. I have it on good authority that it's the most caustic cleaner around. Thanks. I'll give it a try. Wow. This stuff's so grunchous. I'll have it sparkling in no time. Grunchous? Yeah, corrosive, whilst at the same time disconcertingly sweet. Good word, thanks. Probably a good thing she didn't swallow it. I think I have a new word for you. Great. Let's hear it. Napcock. Apparently, it means something weak and tasteless. Ooh, great. That describes the sauce perfectly. Crumplish. I think it means thick and leathery. And also possibly like a swan's anus. Oh, good work. That'll describe the texture perfectly. I must remember to never eat here. Grunctious. It means corrosive yet disconcertingly sweet. That is exactly the feeling I have in my mouth right now. Nice. Right. Let's get this published to the blog. Okay, what do you need to know? Can you tell me about the Fig Brothers case now? Oh, sure. It all started ten years ago. It was my first week on the force when we got an anonymous tip-off about the body. <clears throat> we brought the victim's brother in for questioning, but had to let him go due to a lack of evidence. That night, he skipped town. And when we searched the hall, he'd hidden an antique sword with his fingerprints on the hilt and Fergus's blood on the blade. Then there were the DNA traces found at the scene. It was pretty compelling, I suppose, and the chief was convinced that he'd done it. What do you think? This was something the chief and I argued over. Something just didn't add up. When we interviewed him, he seemed in complete shock and apparently gave us another lead. But his interview cassette went missing, and the chief was convinced of his guilt. That's all irrelevant now, anyway. They dispose of old case files after 10 years, so any possible leads will be gone too. Is there any way I could get hold of one of those case files? I could do with getting to the bottom of this. Actually, I think they're running an auction at the Village Fate today. They're probably selling some old kitten evidence. You never know. You might get lucky. Great, thank you. What can you tell me about the police chief? Uh, he moved away recently after splitting up with his wife. He asked me, it was his obsession with this case that pushed them apart. She's still around. I saw her walk past carrying a box of his old things a few weeks ago. No idea where he is now. Could be on the other side of the world. Bye. Bye. Did the 
toilet cleaning go? Oh, pink crunchy stuff work like a charm, thanks. Please, can I have a go? Go for it. It's free now, anyway. How come it's free? We were charging a pound a go, but some old dear wanted a turn and dropped her purse in the mud. Then the cash all fell out of her purse. Then she slipped and fell on top of the cash. Then the mallet slipped and fell on top of her. I stopped charging in case she tried to sue us or something. The vicar's looking after her now, though I'm not sure who's looking after him. What money did she drop? No idea. The tits came and picked up most of it. Anything else will be under all this mud. If you see her, tell her not to sue me, all right? Can I have a go at Goosey Wallet? Sure. Do you want me to explain the rules to you? Yeah, go on then. One, touch the goose to make it spin. Two, throw your mallet and try to hit it on the head. If you wait until it's spinning too slowly, your throw won't count. If you manage three wallops in a row, you get a prize. But budgets were cut this year, so it's only one prize per customer. Do you want me to repeat the rules? Season goose walloper. Fair enough. Let's wallop. Ah. Ah. That's all your spins for this go. How did you do? Three wallops. I got that goose proper. Oh, nice one. Here you go. Take this badge as your prize. Thanks. Fancy another go? No, I'm all walloped out for now. Fair enough. The Iron Maiden Deluxe Heavy Metal Detector. Bring your quarters to the slaughter or double your nickel back. I need to find a good spot first. better on soft ground. It might work better on grass. No outdoor event would be the same without it. I don't want to dig around just anywhere. Is everybody ready for the auction to begin? I said, is everybody ready for the auction to begin? Oh, uh, yes. OK. First up is this fine semi-automatic rifle behind me. What am I bid? Ten pounds to start? Do I see ten at the back of the room? Five. Do I hit five? Three, then. Do I have three? Back in the room for two pounds. Ugh. One pound it is. I have a pound. Is that a bid from the young lady who presumably has a gun license at the front? Um, no, I guess not. Fine. I'll just put it down as unsold, like everything else today. Right. Last item. A large box containing all the evidence from the Fergus Fig murder investigation. <sighs> Shall we just dispense with the theatre this time? What have you got? One pound? <sighs> I suppose it'll buy me a Twax bar at the shop. Going, going, gone. Sold to the young girl with the already bulging rucksack at the front for one pound. Yay! say that today has been grossly unprofitable would be an understatement. <sighs> I'm going on a break. That'll be one pound, please. Thank you. Don't, you know, touch the guns and stuff, all right? Wouldn't dream of it. Had a girl. Right, let's have a rummage in that box. There's loads of stuff in here, all packed up. 
it's information that I'm after, though. Ah, here's the case file. Let's take a look inside. It looks like some of the pages are missing. It doesn't even tell me the date of the murder. It has the details of two crucial pieces of evidence, though. The DNA sample found at the scene and the sword with blood on the blade and fingerprints on the handle. I agree, it's pretty compelling. But something tells me there's more to it. It mentions Horatio's interview recorded on the night of the murder. Shame the interview cassette's not here too. I bet that would shed some more light on the case. I wonder if I can discover what happened to it. Apparently, the DNA sample was hair retrieved from the fist of the victim. It looks like Fergus yanked a clump of it off his attacker. The DNA match to Horatio was 89% with a 99.9% .9 likelihood that it belonged to a close blood relative or sibling. So it was definitely a close family member. I wonder if there's anyone else who fits the bill. I'll ask around. According to the coroner's report, the murder weapon was a sharp blade exactly like the one found hidden at Fig Hall. It appears that Horatio had attempted to hide it up the chimney. There's a photo of the scene, and you can even see the dried blood on the blade. Forensic analysis confirmed Horatio's fingerprints on the hilt, and that the blood was 100% match for his brother Fergus. This photo reminds me of one I've seen somewhere before. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Enjoying your twags? It's okay. I'm sure they used to be bigger. What can you tell me about Horatio's interview? Well, that was a long time ago, love. It was recorded on the night of the murder. When was that exactly? Look, I don't mean any offence, but could you just drop it? Leave the detecting to the detectorists. There's no need to lose any sleep over it. That's precisely my problem. I just know there's more to it than the case file suggests. What was it you said about the police, Chief? I didn't, but seeing as you asked. You couldn't talk about the fig case around him. He'd flip his lid. Oh, and he was obsessed with a weekly local radio show which played chart music. He used to record the episodes onto a cassette each week. Right after the fig murder, he was too busy to buy any cassettes and ran out. He went scouring the whole town for one. His home, the shops, even police station. I think he found one in the end, but we all gave him a pretty wide berth after that. Including his wife. She left him and gave all his stuff away to charity. What was the exact date of the murder? This case is closed. What if I could prove that the original evidence isn't strong enough to support the case? Then you'd tell me? There's something about this case. Brings out the obsessive nature in people. Something tells me there's more to it. I can't explain why. <sighs> Whatever. In the unlikely event, you can cast serious doubt on both pieces of evidence in the case file. I'll throw all caution to the wind and tell you, like it'll make any difference. What evidence would you need me to debunk? Both of them. The DNA and the murder weapon. Bye. See ya. What are you doing? I'm entering a competition in this kid's magazine. The grand prize is a lifetime supply of fish and chips. What does a lifetime supply of fish and chips even look like? I don't know. I don't even like fish. But I can't resist a competition. What do you have to do? It's for kids, really. You need to name your favourite chip toppings. How many have you got so far? Two. Salt and vinegar. Does that count as two? I'm not sure, but I need at least six more and my mind's gone blank. In my day, I used to enjoy a nice bit of tripe on my chips. I don't know what kids today are into. You're the youngest person I've seen in here by about 40 years. Can you remember any? The only time I ever had fish and chips was on holiday. I'll have a think and see if I can remember any. What can you tell me about the box by the window? It's full of home recordings of the chart show on cassette. A lady bought them in. They belonged to her ex-husband. They're not bad. I've been listening to them in my spare time. Anything interesting on them? Not yet, but there are tons of them to get through. Bye. <laughs>
See ya. I suppose I might as well take a look. According to the plaque, this photo's almost 40 years old. Hang on a minute. There's the sword in the chimney, complete with the same dried blood spatter. If this photo is really 40 years old, what's it doing there 30 years before he even hid it? Unless it was actually hidden there decades before and isn't the murder weapon at all. At least, not for this murder anyway. I wonder why someone hid a sword up there in the first place. I should go and tell the police officer about this. It looks like there used to be a family tree hanging on the wall 40 years ago. It's too small to make out on the photograph though. I wonder if anyone knows what happened to the original. I wonder if anyone would notice if I took this. Yep. Plus, I have an alarm switch right under the counter. And how would the receptionist does a mean pile driver? You can pick up a promotional pack for members at reception. I think there are some postcards in there. Thanks. You can see the sword stuck in the chimney plain as day. According to the plaque, this... These vases look very familiar. There's only one of them in Fig Hall nowadays. Maybe I should ask Esme about them. Do you have a set of postcards for members? Oh, yes. And not only that, I'll even throw in a free branded tote bag containing promotional literature from our specially selected third-party partners. Joy. I know, right? Here you go. Thanks. Here. Let me take that visitor pass, too. I recognize you anyway. It's got some postcards and promotional junk in it. I'll take them out. Where's the family tree now? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. It was stolen around the same time as that priceless vase went walkabouts. The photo in the other room shows a sword stuck up the chimney. Doesn't surprise me. There was all sorts of stuff here when the trust took over. Most of it had been here for decades. Covered in dust and cobwebs. I don't think Horatio did a scrap of dusting while he was living here. What happened to the other bars? It was stolen while Marjorie was on duty. Oh yeah, the curly whirly eater. Quite. It's probably found its way into the house of a wealthy collector by now. Bye. Oh, come again soon. It's good to see your continuing interest in local history. Same as the one at Fig Hall. Apparently, the other one was stolen at the same time as the Fig family tree. I guess we can add kleptomaniac to my mother's list of disturbing conditions. I wonder if it holds any clues. So, it was stolen at the same time as the family tree. I'll take a closer look. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, there's a large piece of canvas rolled up inside. I can't get it out, though. I'll need to wrap it in something soft, though. Good plan. I don't plan to do any toting anyway. This is going to take some serious care. I hope it's not just a receipt in there. OK, here goes. Don't look. I am in so much trouble. Oh well, let's see what we've got. This is it. 
The big family tree. Why on earth did my mum nick all this stuff? I really worry about her sometimes. I can see Horatio and Fergus right at the bottom of the tree. But there's another name right next to Fergus. So they did have another sibling. I can just make out the words A fig, but the rest has been torn off. I guess they were even more of a black sheep than Horatio. I should show this to the police officer right away. Hey, look at this! According to this family tree, Fergus and Horatio had another sibling with the initial A. The hair sample could have come from them. Hmm. That does cast doubt on the DNA evidence. Where are they now? Uh, I don't know. No one's told me anything about them. Found anything about the murder weapon yet? Actually, yes. Here you go. This photo was taken 40 years ago. You can clearly see the blood-stained sword in the fireplace. And the other photo shows the two brothers duelling when they were younger. That's likely when the sword got covered in Fergus's blood. OK, I'll buy that. Fair dues. You're not at all bad at this. Now will you tell me the date of the murder? OK, fair enough. The murder took place 10 years ago this year. Yeah, I know that already. All right, keep your massive hair on. Did you know that the murder took place on the night the theme park was due to open? Yeah, I discovered that earlier too. Well, excuse me, Mr Holmes. So the exact date was... What? Oh, yeah. Sometime in June. The 26th, I think? OK, thanks. The chart show. It's crammed with cassettes, all dated individually. A lady bought them in a few weeks ago. Apparently, her ex-husband used to record music off a local radio show every week for years. Never paid for music in his life. She tried to give us his hi-fi too, but the pause button was completely worn out. So I've been listening to them on my Talkman instead. No prizes for guessing who these belong to. Hmm. The police chief was looking for a cassette to record onto the day after Horatio's interview. I'll take a look. Oi, don't touch anything. I was only looking. That may well be the case, but I can't watch the shop and fill in this competition at the same time. So in the meantime, just keep your wandering fingers to yourself. You could just put it down while there's a customer in the shop. Oh, so you're planning to buy something now, are you? Er. Uh... Just leave everything alone until I'm done. be a better place for it. There we go. I'll just dip my pyjamas on. It's stopped raining finally. At least all the bread will have dried out. I'll just take one. This one does for me. Ah, this is more like it. I love the seaside. That makes one of us. Looks like the tide's out. It's a puddle of dingy old brown. Who knows what it is? Actually, thinking about it, the owner of the chip van probably knows. over there. Gravy for going on chips. Of course it is. How are you doing? Oh, not good. My nozzle's clogged. No one wants that. What nozzle?
muscle are we talking about exactly? It's the end of my oil thermometer. Without a clear nozzle, I can't get the oil to the right temperature. And there's no way I'm serving underripe chips. Quite right, too. I'm looking for something that'll help me reach out and grab stuff. Oh, don't look at me, love. Although people find plenty of stuff on the beach at low tide. Especially if you look under things. You should ask the sergeant. He hides away on a rock formation out in the bay. Oh, yeah. I see it. Who's the sergeant? He's not really a sergeant. Well, obviously. He gave himself that title and likes to lord it about the place. That was until he almost got himself eaten. That brought him down a peg or two. Now he's in hiding and spends his time combing the beach. He collects all sorts of rubbish that the tide leaves behind. What's the rock formation in the bay? It's an island at high tide. That's where the sergeant is living now. That's if he's still brooding over his capture. His capture? Yeah. I'm sure he'll tell you all about it if given half the chance. And if you're really lucky, he'll show you his ancient artefact. That sounds fascinating. It really isn't. <laughs> what is it? Between you and me, it's just a piece of plastic crap that washed up on the beach. But I think it reminds him of himself. What kinds of sauces and condiments do you offer? Oh, anything you can remember. I suppose that stands to reason. For instance, gravy. The list is literally endless. Wait, no, that was the end. Bye. Have a good day. What's the red sauce? Oh, I call that red sauce. Genius. Great, more brightly coloured litter. I don't think this will help me much with my nightmare, but it looks like it's in good working order. Okay. Okay, let's go catch something that likes bread. Anyone home? Why won't you come out? Oh, I see. Those gulls giving you a hard time, eh? I suppose your tasty looking get up isn't helping. Why don't you just find yourself a less delicious looking home? Oh, you can't change your shell while they're hanging around. I'd like to get past so I can explore around this end of the beach. If I can get the gulls away from you, will you let me get past? I guess that's as close as a crab can get to a thumbs up. How am I going to get these gulls away from him? Drinking it. Looks like the tide's in. Okay, I'm sure this is safe. You have reached your destination. That is one enormous crustacean. Oh, woe is me. Is it? It certainly is, young limpet. For I have upon my claw a ring of pure shame. It looks like a pure rubber band to me. What is a mere rubber band to you is a badge of humiliation for a glorious creature like myself. A crustacean's claws are a symbol of his potency, his strength, his virility, his, um, nippability. I have been emasculated. 
crippled in my prime. It's why I have hidden myself away in my dazzling palace. The drapes are pure bladderack, by the way. But um, where are my manners? Let me introduce myself. I am Sergeant Crabulous. Before my claw was bested, I commanded the respect of all the other crabs in the area, and some of the prawns. But I will rise again, if I can get this blasted rubber band off. Hello. Hello, little scallop. What, what? 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 Is this all stuff you found on the beach? Quite the collection, eh? Found any gold? Only that pen on the floor over there. But it's too puny for my tremendous claws. Do you have anything that will help me to reach out? That's a very profound question. But if it's reaching that you want to do, you can't get much better than the ancient artifact on the wall behind me. Looks like you enjoy your chips. Oh, they are my absolute Achilles heel. Especially when covered in delectable chip spice. Okay, and that is... what exactly? Oh, my dear, you simply haven't lived if you've not sampled the salty fire of chip spice. A subtle blend of aromatic herbs, spices, and monosodium glutamate. What I want to know is, how come you remember something like that if I don't? The subconscious works in strange and convenient ways. How did you get that rubber band on your claw in the first place? Interesting story, actually. I was out one day patrolling the perimeter for the usual do-badders, keeping the area tickety-boo, what what, but I was overcome by the delectable scent of bacon. I was drawn inexorably towards the source of the aroma. I found it almost immediately, of course, due to my heightened and fabulously perceptive senses. But the bacon deceived me. I was a victim of my own uncommonly tenacious disposition. I was incarcerated. Within a minute, I was being unceremoniously hauled from the waves and paraded on a platter of crushed ice with only a sprig of parsley to hide my shame. That must have been some massive parsley. A veritable forest, my little winkle. But this is where I triumphed. They shackled one of my claws with this wretched band. But before they could finish the job, I gave them the old one-two. They were caught off guard by my remarkable strength and flung me far into the ocean. I landed here, and I haven't left since. Can't have the troops seeing me like this, what what. What will you do for me if I help you get that rubber band off? What is it that you want? Well, I could do me something to help stop me from drowning. Something that'll help me to reach out and grab opportunities. I don't like the way this is going. Something a bit like that ancient artifact on the wall. Well, isn't that just flipping typical? Of course, you could just wait for the rubber band to decompose. It'll only take 50 years or so. Oh, OK, fine. Just get this band off me. Bye. Goodbye, my little barnacle. I suppose this must be chip spice. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. Might I ever take this? Not at all. It's pretty useless to me. The fingers keep coming off. Oh, yeah, so they do. I suppose it's easier to carry around than a whole arm anyway. Do you want this pen? I wouldn't have picked it up if I didn't want it. However, as it appears to be only compatible with pathetic human appendages, you may take it. Thanks. I wonder if you'll let me hitch a ride. Anything's worth a try at this point. Pass it over. Right up. Let's see what this little chap can do.
That's done it. I better get some chips and fryer right away. Could you lend me some chips? Lend you some chips? I need to get some gulls away from the hermit crab down on the beach. Oh, you mean Kermit. Kermit? The hermit? I guess it's some kind of rhyming nominative determinism. Over this trouble with the gulls, he brings it on himself, you know. Last time, he made it home in a doughnut. Stupid bugger only lasted about three seconds before he was stripped naked again. Here you are, take a small bag. Stand still long enough and the gulls will find you. Thanks. I'm not sure I fancy being mocked by gulls. Your choice, love. You want cheese on them? Not today, thanks. Don't quit wasting good cheese on the gulls. There you go. Bye. Have a good day. Fancy some chips? That's so kind and selfless of you. Thank you. I'll eat them over here. Aww. It's nice to see him making friends. Let's take a look. Mostly salty paper. Although, aha! There's a pot of something not entirely unlike vomit. It's curry sauce. It's curry sauce. At low tide, you can get down to the beach. Calm down now. I'll leave him alone. At least I can get past now. Okay, let's see if I can move this thing. Go on, little fella. That shell's just perfect for you. looks accessible now too. They look a lot less appetising when they're on the ground. And that's saying something. It's Kermit's old house. You've got white on you. Are you actually enjoying this? Honestly, I don't even know anymore. Feeling the nostalgia? Is that like nausea? No, it's that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when reminiscing about the past. Then no, I'm not feeling that. Bye. It's too slippery for my hands, but I know someone who loves climbing ropes. I'd need a good reason to go up there before we start scaling any rocks. It's probably easier to get across at high tide, for me at least. Bye. Like the 
tides in. Free return trips. Visitors leaving the seaside from this island will arrive here when returning. That's good to know. How can I get the rubber band off? If my own mighty strength can't get it off, you're certainly going to need help. Do you have anyone who could help you? You know what? I think I might. If I can find a way to get him onto this island. So long, my little scallop. Looks like the tide's in. I need your help to get the rubber band off a giant crab's claw. Why am I not even vaguely surprised? Do you reckon you could climb that rope? What, so you can leave me hanging there again? Oh, come on, please. This is the last time I'll ask you to do anything with a rope. I promise. You know, I'm only doing this because I have literally nothing better to do. All right up there. Oh, yeah. Apart from the crippling vertigo, I'm just dandy. By the way, I wouldn't recommend the rope. I've got weird green crap all over my hands. I'll just wait for you up here. Okay, I'll try and find a way to meet you up there. Is this that giant crab you were talking about? How did you guess? Okay, let's get this over with. There we go, all disbanded. Oh, oh, oh my, it feels so good to be able to nip again. Please take the antique artifact from my wall as your reward. Thanks, I will. Ancient 
artifact of his will help me in my latest nightmare. Definitely the worst one yet. This psychology book is utter bobbins. I'm giving it one last chance, then I'm making it a new home in a shredder. Chapter 4 Make yourself heard. Don't become silenced by fear. Express yourself through words, art, poetry, or music, and let the world know you're here. Silence is your enemy. That's even more vague than the last one. Wait. All this trauma is triggering another repressed vision. Lucky old me. These are getting weirder and weirder. My mum won't even allow scissors in the house. I must be getting close to discovering the root of my nightmares and my subconscious is trying to defend itself Not while I'm in my pyjamas Want some help with the competition? Sure, can you remember anything that goes on chips? What about gravy? Of course, that's going in there. I still need five more. Red sauce is a popular choice. You mean ketchup? I'm not sure. I think they're the same thing. Then it's going on the list. Four more to go. Curry sauce. Oh, yeah. I only need three more now. Have you got chip spice? Is that a medical condition? Possibly, but I'm talking about a spicy powder you sprinkle on chips. That's good enough for me. Another couple and we're there. Don't forget mushy peas. Ah, wouldn't want to miss that one. I just need one more. Apparently, cheese. Ooh, that sounds lush. Thanks. Right, that's all filled in. Thanks for your help. I'll be closing the shop soon so I can get this posted off. Feel free to have a quick look around before I go. The chart show. It's crammed with cassettes, all dated individually. No prizes for guessing who these belong to. Hmm. The police chief was looking for a cassette to record onto the day after Horatio's interview. I'll take a look. I'll take this elaborate brick off the top first. I'll give this one a whirl. Talking. This is it. The missing interview cassette. I'm going to take this home and listen to it in private. Oh, are you now? I hope you're going to pay for it. Oh, come on. I helped you out with the competition. How about I let you swap it for something else? What about the metal detector I got from here in the first place? Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Just stick it back in the bucket of pre loved belongings. You can take this trowel too. Getting something. My cassette player. Whoops, sorry. Honest mistake. Yeah, right. 
That's better. Now off you pop, we're closing. Time to go home and listen to this cassette properly. Listen to this. Interview with the murder suspect. Can you confirm your name for the tape, please? Horatio Fig. Speak up a bit, please. Horatio Fig. Thank you. Now, what can you tell me about your whereabouts earlier tonight? I, I've been home all evening. Really? Well, we had an anonymous tip-off earlier tonight that you were seen fleeing the new theme park. Do you have anything to say about that? I went to wish Fergus luck. Oh, of course you did. I've heard you're a very strong advocate of theme parks on your family's land. D -d OK, look, I know Fergus and I haven't always seen eye to eye, but kill me own brother. I couldn't. D -d -d I wouldn't. And, and what could I possibly have to gain? Oh, I don't know. Your brother's share of the estate, perhaps? Fergus saw to it that that would never happen when he amended his will recently. Really? So I suppose we're looking at revenge, plain and simple. Look, I don't need Fergus' bloody money. I'm innocent and I can prove it to you. I'm all ears. Just check the tapes. Tapes? What tapes? The security tapes at the theme park. Fergus told me it had state-of-the-art video surveillance. Do I look like a complete idiot to you? Of course we checked the security tapes. They were all empty. Obviously someone decided they didn't need to be turned on tonight. You don't have any evidence to pin this on me. You'll have to let me go. I know my rights. Oh, it's just a matter of time. I know a guilty man when I see one. We'll be starting with a thorough search of that eyesore you call home as soon as I have a warrant. The head. I beg your pardon? The head of the ferret costume, where is it? Why don't you tell me? Fergus told me he had video cameras mounted inside each of the theme park costumes. After he kept being punched by members of the public whilst handing out flyers. If you can find the head, you'll find the tape and the real killer. Well, you saw to it that the head would never be found, I'm sure. This interview is terminated. I'll be seeing you again very soon, Fig. Wow, that was intense. I guess they never found the ferret head or the security tape. Hey, Anne. All right, Luz. How are you sleeping? That seems to change almost hourly. In the meantime, I'm trying to solve a decade-old murder case in the hope that it will somehow help me understand or otherwise purge my troubled mind. Well, good luck with that. What do you know? What? You want to know literally everything I know? No, it's a greeting, like, how are you? <laughs> All right, so you don't want to know what I know? No, not really. Not unless you know where to find a giant ferret head. I like you, Lucy. But you and your family are all certifiable. You do know that, right? You have no idea. What are you reading? I managed to get some comics before they closed the shop. Anything good? I'm working through them. I'll finish this one if you want to borrow it. I'm not really into horror comics. I only bought it because it had a free bag of dweebs on the front. The Phantom Organ. Enter the inspired, spine-tingling world of a deformed maniac and his enormous pipes. That's pretty niche. Thanks. That sounds like just the inspiration I need right now. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Bye. See ya. Someone stuck a flyer under our front door. Live music at the ferret's head. Join German electro pop sensation Gronk for an interactive music extravaganza. Bring this special invitation with you. I suppose I could head to the pub to see what the fuss is about. Oh, 
flight. This gig is by special invitation only. If you don't have a flyer, you'll have to leave. Hang on, do you mean this thing someone shoved under our door? Let's have a look at it. Aye, that's the chap. Enjoy the show. The next time, bring your parents with you or something. This music makes me feel quite energetic. They show the notes he's playing. They're flashing in the order G A E D C. This music makes me feel a bit shaky. They show the notes he's playing. They're flashing in the order D E G C A. This music makes me feel sleepy. They show the notes he's playing. They're flashing in the order E D A G C. be a better place for it. In you go. I can't wait to see what messed up crap this one generates. I'll just get my pyjamas on. Ooh, spooky. I hope there's something here that can help me with my latest nightmare. According to my dad's book, I need something to help me make a lot of noise. Although I can't help thinking that a crowbar would be somewhat simpler. No point leaving it out here. Okay. I'm not strong enough to break it off. Not compared to some of the horrors I've witnessed today. At least all the bird poo seems to have come off now. Could you get that branch for me? Just the, get the branch? Yeah, it looks handy. Why'd you ask? Oh, I don't know. I was expecting you to ask me to climb up the tower, or jump down the well, or otherwise risk my own neck for no good reason. Can you... Get me the branch. Just uh, get the branch? Just get the branch. You won't want me to impale myself on it or anything afterwards. No. Promise? Promise. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? I'm dreading whatever's coming. Nice snug fit. I'll give it a whack with this. The pen's now bent into an L shape. I'll take it out again. I like your hanging baskets outside. I'm glad somebody does. You hear that, Master? Somebody likes the hanging baskets. The ones I spent hours arranging. He's not listening. He never listens. What are you building? Oh, <laughs> it is my new monster. The latest in Swedish self-assembly abominations. It looks like a work in progress. Some of the parts were missing from the box. Without them, I fear it will never walk. What's up those stairs? The master. But he must be left alone. Is he asleep or something? Oh no. The master never sleeps. I've been there. No. He is playing with his organ. You mean like a pipe organ, right? Of course. He is a great musician. The only thing he loves playing with more than his organ is his giant horn. A 
again, this is a musical horn? Naturally. When he puts his lips upon it, you can hear it across the whole land. Now, that sounds like just the kind of thing I'm after. Is there any way up the stairs? You wish to disturb the master? Why, is that a bad idea? <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of my twin brother. Never disturb the master while he is playing. Even I avoid going up there. That is all academic anyway. My creation cannot be moved until it is complete. And the parts are on back order until next Wednesday. How's your master supposed to get down the stairs if you're blocking them? The master never leaves his room. He has everything he needs. You don't want to go upstairs. Well, if he's playing, I sometimes brave it. But if I need to get near him or the organ, he gets really mad. Under those circumstances, I make him a nice cup of tea and give him a chalky picky. As long as the tea is made correctly, he loves to dunk a chalky picky in it. Then he sits back, closes his eyes, and just enjoys the moment. At least it gives me a few seconds to get in and do what I need to do. Can you clear your monster out of the way? Oh, no. Now that it is partially assembled, it's too heavy for me to lift. The only thing that can move it is... itself. <laughs> Please stop that. Is there no way you can finish building it? Not unless I can find lungs. A brain and a six millimeter hex key. What's a hex key? Whoa. The hex key is a legendary device for unlocking powerful, dangerous mojo. Whoa, really? No, not really. It's a six sided, L shaped bar of metal for assembling Scandinavian furniture. That sounds distinctly less fun. True, although it is marginally more original. What does it need lungs for? How else is it supposed to communicate? It can actually talk. Well, not really talk so much as grunt. I order lungs that replicate the sound of birdsong with every grunt. But it looks like I'll have to make do. Anything flexible that holds enough air and makes a noise will do for now. Do you have anything like that around here? Nope. What kind of brain does it need? It doesn't actually need one to function. It's purely aesthetic. So it just needs to look pretty? Have you never seen an abomination being built before? It needs to appear impressive and futuristic, whilst adding no real scientific value whatsoever. To be honest, even a nice-looking lamp would probably do. Okay, leave it with me. Bye! Okay. I'll let a bit of light in. Wait! Stop! That's another thing I need to fix. Sorry, it just fell off. Of course it did. It was only held on with dust and goodwill. And the goodwill ran out when I spent four hours on the phone to a Swedish call center this morning. I'll just clean this up. Oh, you're so kind.
suppose this counts as inspiration. They're packed full of comedy. You still here? Always will be. I'm growing out of the floor. Enjoying your he noun stickers? I was. But then I used them all up in needlessly bizarre and illogical scenarios. What kind of idiot would do that? Got anything new? Well, we do have another special tonight. Whoopee! I'm obliged by my contract to tell you that it's a real gas. Is it? Only in the sense that it is literally a gas, yes. It's a mixture of hydrogen sulfide, methane, and nitrous oxide. The management are trying to shift a load of old props. So each one is served in a used whoopee cushion. That sounds really unpleasant. If you think that's bad, you should try the rubber chicken soup. Look, if you just took one, you'd be doing me a favor. Do I have to inhale it? I'll tell you what, I'll squeeze one out for you now. There you go. Thanks. Okay. There we go. It's still raining. If I've learned anything, it's that you can never have enough captured insects. I'll put it straight in my bag to stop it escaping. I found you a hex key. Ah, thank you. This will be perfect for tightening his nuts. <laughs> what? Never mind. Could you use this for the locks? I suppose it might work. I wonder how my monster will sound with this in its chest. Loud and proud. Oh, I do hope so. What was that noise? Squeaky floorboard. this for an impressive addition to your creation? Oh, very technological looking. It will make the perfect brain. I'll put it right on top when I have everything I need. This is it. After so long, I finally have everything I need. We can finally clean this place up. Be better company. I meant for lunch. This will block the light coming through the ceiling and make an excellent death trap at the same time. A big brass horn. It's only held up there by a single nail. It looks like the slightest little shake could bring it crashing down. Judging by the large heap of droppings underneath it, the local bats have been using it as a roost. All in all, I'd say that standing directly underneath it is a pretty bad idea. I wonder if I could encourage the bats to knock it down. 
It provides access to the pipes inside the organ, but it's locked. The lock has a little musical note carved onto it. What was that noise? Close that cupboard at once. Ow! Bloody plant! Sorry. Tea. The hinges on this door are really squeaky. Good thing, too. of nice manky water. Okay. I'll just give it a little oil. It's full of tea making paraphernalia. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, chocky bickies. Some Earl Beige tea bags. Very posh. A teaspoon. And finally some sugar cubes. What on earth am I supposed to do with all this? Only joking. I'm making a brew before this day is out, no mistake. Okay. I wonder what these are for? They look like a set of ESP cards. I guess this isn't my lucky day. I'll stick a bag in. I'll turn it on. Looks like it's boiled. I'll add a bit of hot water. I'll pop a cube in. I'll pop a cube in. Let's give it a stir. A splash of milk. Let's give it a stir. I think I've done all I should to this cup of tea. I'll give him his mug. I'll leave him a biscuit to munch on. I'd better move out of the way. like he's enjoying his brew and biscuits. It's got a series of notes written on it. A, G, E, C, D. This must be the order he's playing them in. This tune has made the bats all sleepy.
What was that noise? Those bats really didn't like this tune. OK. Wow. Imaginary rucksacks are even more spacious than regular ones. There's something written on the back of the plate. Percy. Oh, yeah, that was the name of my mum's favourite cat. He was a vicious little bastard. off first. Wait, who are you? Was it you who murdered him? The one who started all this? Why can't I see your face? It's all connected. The flashbacks, the nightmares, the strange men contacting me via email, which, in retrospect, I should probably have just ignored. I feel like I'm missing one final piece of the puzzle. I need to find that security videotape. Chapter 5. Accept your fate. This looks like the last chapter. Having satisfied your psyche's need for joy, companionship, nourishment and security, you are now equipped with everything you need to complete your journey. Go and face your demons head on. Why do I feel like this is going to end badly? Another email. I'd better check it out. It's from H again. Speak to Curly. Well, that's going to be tricky. Wasn't he the deaf caretaker who reported the murder? He wasn't in the pub last time I went in. I bet the pub landlord knows where to find him, though. Not while I'm in my pyjamas. Where's Curly? He's gone. Can't stand modern music. Any idea where he'll be? Probably at the school. But the school's closed today. He likes to get stuff done while the kids aren't there to tease him. I don't blame him. OK, I'll check it out, thanks. Don't go taking the piss. He's a nice bloke and he's been through a lot. I'll add the school to my map now. You do that, crazy girl. Cool music. I'm glad someone likes it. Too bad you're not the paying customer. Bye then. There's not much point. He can't hear me. Oh, is that so? Wait a minute, I thought you were deaf. <laughs> yeah, everybody does. You'd be amazed what people say when they think you can't hear them. So how come you're talking to me now? It seems we have a lot to talk about. What are you doing here? Your wazak of a twin brother has been applying his myriad talents on the school building. Hey, come on. How do you even know it was Lloyd who did it? <sighs> oh. I don't really blame him, given the things he witnessed. What do you mean? I figured your parents wouldn't have told you. Hey, that's their decision. I'm not about to tell people how to bring up their kids. So, what was it that Lloyd witnessed? Not just Lloyd. You were there too. What? Where? Does this have anything to do with that theme park? That was a bad business. Cost me my job. Cost a man his life. And cost his twin their sanity. I can empathise there. Guilty or not, Horatio must be slightly unhinged. Horatio? Horatio wasn't Fergus' twin. No, it was his sister. Oh, I thought... Annabelle Fig, her name was. I used to have a bit of a thing for her when I was younger. That was before she went nuts and ran away from home. 
What can you tell me about Annabelle? Well, in a nutshell, with a capital nut, she was Fergus' twin sister. Horatio was a few years older. He acted like he was lord of the manor after the parents died. When she was about 17, Annabelle had a big argument with Horatio and ended up running away from home. No one ever saw her again, which is probably just as well. If she had ever wanted revenge, it would have been all too easy. She was a crack shot, and her skill with a machete made Conan the Barbarian look like a spork-wielding toddler. She sounds a bit like my mum. What exactly happened at the theme park? That's what's weird. That night, I saw someone with Fergus who was the absolute spit of Annabelle. I'm sure it was her. Maybe she came back to see him after his photo was in the paper. He gave her the grand tour like they were best friends. Showed her the ceremonial ribbon, practiced his speech, even let her kids go on a couple of rides. Kids? Yeah, two of them. Only toddlers, mind you. Anyway, I had to go and get me plunger to sort out a particularly hefty blockage in the gents. I really miss that plunger. The kind of suction you could really... Anyway, I heard a scream. When I got there, Fergus is lying on the floor, dressed as a giant polecat. There's blood all over the place, and his head is... Well, not on his neck. Then I hear a noise by the gate, and I see Horatio running away from the park. So I get the hell out of there, leaving my plunger behind. When anything like this goes down, everyone always blames the caretaker. It's an occupational hazard. I wasn't about to stick around and wait to be arrested. I gave the police an anonymous tip-off once I got far enough away. I found evidence that sheds doubt on Horatio's guilt. Oh, well, I never actually saw him murder his brother. But if he didn't do it, who did? That's what worries me. Apparently, there was a security camera hidden inside Fergus's ferret costume. If I can find the tape, I can finally discover the truth. What happened to Annabelle after the murder? She'd scurped by the time I got there. Only, get this, a few weeks later, I went back to the park to get me plunger back. It was a genuine double-ended luxury pump and squelch. They don't even make them anymore. Best plunger I ever owned. But anyway... Right, so I turn up and they've already started building houses. Right on top of the theme park. There's some guy with a heart hat on looking at plans. And guess who's with him? Ed the Duck. Annabelle. That land was all owned by the Fick family. My guess is she inherited it, along with a tidy sum when her twin brother died. She changed her name, and she's lived there ever since. That's where your house is now. Yeah, I gathered. Her kids are grown up too. I suppose so. They say twins run in the family. What are you getting at? One boy, one girl she had. Oh no. They'd be your age now. I can see where this is going. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Just spit it out, will you? Can you get me plunger back? What? They didn't even level the park before they started building. So my pump and squelch is still underneath your house somewhere. I've waited over a decade to get it back. Seriously? You've basically just revealed I'm the niece of a murdered aristocrat and witnessed a life-changing horror committed by my own family. Admittedly, that bit's not a huge surprise to me, but it definitely warranted a little more sensitivity, don't you think? It was a really good plunger. Why should I get your plunger back? No one's saying you should, but based on what you've told me, you'd be needing my help very soon. And don't tell me you're not a tiny bit curious about what's buried under your house. How am I supposed to get underneath my house? My mate worked on the construction site. Apparently, your house has an access point which leads underground. Really? I've never seen anything. Maybe if you found the original blueprints for the building. Where would I find something like that? They're all on public record. You could ask at the library. There should be ledges for all planning applications in the local area going back years. 
Find the right ledger and you'll find the blueprints. OK, I'll start there and see what I can find out. I'll be going now. You do that. I'm looking for the ledger of local planning applications. Oh, really? How long ago do you need to go back? About ten years. Oh, in that case, you'll be wanting volume 42. Just use the machine in the back. You know what to do. Thank you. Prince of our house. Yoink. It's the blueprints of our house. I don't recognise this room. It must have been bricked up. Our kitchen and the hallway behind it. A look. No. Nothing there. Just here, some of the papers peeling away. There's a security keypad under the wallpaper. Looks like it's not been touched for years. Although my dad can't even work the TV remote, so that's no great surprise. It's asking for a password. I'm guessing it's one my parents came up with. Oh, it looks just like our old cat. What was his name again? Is that it? No hidden doorway. I feel ripped off. Ah, now that's more like it. Just... My mother enjoyed displaying dead animals, but even I didn't see this one coming. I'm not leaving here till I get some answers. Last will and testament of Fergus Fig. It was amended just a few days before his murder. I can see Horatio's name crossed out and replaced with Annabelle. It looks like she inherited his entire share of the Fig estate when he died. I suppose I should at least take a look at it. Hopefully there's no disembodied head in there. What's this? It feels like a brick. Oh, wow. It's a giant cassette. This must be the security tape Horatio mentioned in the police interview. But just look at this thing. How am I going to find a machine old enough to even play it? I'll just take a closer look. Alpha Max 60. I feel like I've seen this logo before somewhere. It was probably in one of our ancient history textbooks. Hang on, that's it. This is the same make as the video machine at school. OK. 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 It's nailed down. Let's get some of those pesky nails out. That should do it. What's underneath this thing? Oh, don't you open that trap door. You're a fool if you dare. Actually, I can't open it because it's got a mahoosive padlock on it. Oh, hang on. It's not actually locked. What a muppet. OK. Why not? When other kids dream of having a theme park in their house, I don't think this is what they're imagining. This 
This'll be useful if I meet any rodents of unusual size. This'll show those hinges who's boss. Looks like the hinges are the boss. I might be able to lever the door with this. Hooray! Now there's nothing to stop me thoroughly investigating an abandoned underground lavatory. On second thoughts, maybe hooray wasn't what I meant at all. There's something stuck inside. Looks like a double-ended luxury pump and squelch to me. Nice. I think I've discovered all I can in here now. Whoops. I dropped some tools down the ladder. Never mind, looks like they're knackered now anyway. something for you. Pumpy? Is it really you? It's yours. All you need to do is let me into the school to use the video machine. Is that all? Come with me. I'll let you in, but then you're on your own. I'm not hanging around. Come on, Betty. We're getting out of here. I hope you find what you're looking for on that tape. No going back now. Right, where's that video machine? This thing is older than the school itself. Looks like it's plugs one pixel too far from the socket. That's annoying. The screwdriver in here is the only thing worth taking. If it's a book, I'm having it, apparently. Arnie's got in his locker. I'm sure Arnie won't mind if I borrow a couple. I knew I was carrying this around for some reason. I kind of miss it. There we go. The trolley should move now. Okay. Let's move this into position. Phew, that should be close enough now. It should reach the socket now. Right, it's going in. Now I just need to turn on the TV. This will help me reach if I stand on it. It's too thin to make any difference. Okay, I'll add one more. Okay, I'll add one more. Chapter 5. It Control for the school TV. There we go, good as new. It's all fixed up and ready to use.
Hey, Bella, what do you think of my new look? Bella? Where'd she go? Probably chasing after Lloyd. He's a chip off the old block. I do hope Horatio can make it tonight. Those two really need to patch things up after so long. Oh, hey, Lucy. Careful with those scissors now. It's slippy. Lucy, you shouldn't run with... What? What just happened? That looked like... It was me. I killed Fergus. I feel... I feel... She appears to be suffering a degree of memory loss after the trauma to her head. Where am I? D -d Don't worry, Lucy. You're safe. We, we got a call saying you were at the school. Your mother came and found you. C could we have a moment, Doctor? Of course. I'll just be out here if you need me. You know, Lucy... Your m mother's always been the one looking out for you, ever since. Well, you know, she won't let anything bad happen to you. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Oh, n n never mind that now. Listen, you try to get a good n n night's sleep, you hear? We'll be back tomorrow to check on you. N n night, night. Fugitive Horatio Fig has been found dead after a decade of being on the run for the murder of his brother, Fergus. His body was discovered on the outskirts of his hometown of Figgington. He appears to have slipped whilst running with an extra large pair of scissors. So the local police are treating his death as accidental. Finally, it seems the Fig family will be able to rest in peace. did it. I don't remember anything from the past few days. I'm just looking forward to getting some sleep. Hi, I'm Lucy and this is my brand new nightmare. Give my heart back, you little tits! <laughs> <laughs> 